Hi, welcome to the MOOC on Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn. In this lesson, we will discover what is machine learning and its general underlying concepts. This lesson is an introduction and focuses on general concepts rather than coding or math. So, what is machine learning? In a nutshell, machine learning is about building predictive models. I will explain what we mean by predictive models later on. First of all, I would like to discuss why and when would we use machine learning. Let me start with a couple of examples. Consider flowers, for instance. I'm not very good at recognizing them. These are irises, but what type? There are three classic types of irises, setosa, versicolor, virginica. Maybe I can use machine learning to build mathematical rules to set them apart. For this, I will describe the irises with numbers. I can measure the dimensions of their sepal and petal. Now, I have a set of numbers describing irises. Can I build decision rules from these numbers? Maybe. See, for instance, it seems that setosa irises have a very small petal. Let us consider a problem closer to a business case. That of estimating the income of someone. For this, we can use data from the US Census. As you see, it gives fairly diverse information about individuals. Age, work class, education, marital status, occupation, relationship, and more information, as well as whether they earn more or less than $50,000 a year. We can use machine learning to build rules that will predict this income information from the rest of the demographic information. You can also see that even in a simple example like this, having intuitions about the information available on many individuals can be a bit challenging. Data visualization will come in handy. So, machine learning is about engineering decision rules from the data, but experts can also engineer decision rules from their knowledge of the problem. For instance, flower experts know that setosa irises have small petals. This rule can also be inferred by looking at the data. If we look at the distribution of the sepal and petal measurements of the different iris species, we can see that petal length and width single out well setosa. But how can we deal with more complex, more numerous data? The benefit of machine learning is that it automates the creation of the rules from the data, including their details, such as where exactly to set the threshold on the petal length. In concrete terms, machine learning builds the prediction rules from the data. We will now get to the heart of the matter by focusing on predictive models. To build predictive models, we are going to rely on statistical properties of the data. However, the questions and the tools that we will use differ a bit from those traditionally used in statistics. In machine learning, we want to conclude on new instances. In the example on the census, I want to be able to predict the income of new individuals with a combination of jobs and demographics that I have never seen. The challenge is that there are many ways an individual can vary, even within the limited description given by our data. An additional difficulty is the noise in the data. By noise, we mean the aspects that cannot be explained solely from the data. For instance, an individual's income may have been influenced by the mood of his manager,
during his annual review, which is not in our database. One possibility for prediction is to memorize the whole available data. Given the problem of predicting income, we can store all known individuals, the census. Then, given a new individual, we predict the income of its closest match in our database. This strategy is known in machine learning as a nearest neighbor predictor. If we try this strategy on the data we have, the census, what error rate do we expect? Each individual for which we are asking a prediction is in our database. Thus, its closest match will be itself. And as a consequence, we will have zero prediction error. However, if we try our strategy on unseen data, we will not be able to find an exact match. Hence, it is likely to make some errors. What we are seeing here is that generalizing is very different from memorizing. This is a fundamental challenge of machine learning. The reason is that the data on which we apply the predictive model, known as the test data, is different from the data used to build the predictive model, known as the trained data. They are different because there might be different noise, but also because there might be individuals with new configurations of features that we have not observed, different combinations of occupation, age, or marital status. The typical workflow in machine learning is to use a given data set to learn a predictive model. For instance, predicting the type of virus, and then to apply it to new data, or what we will call a test set, to put the model in production or to check its validity. To go further, it is useful to define a bit the concepts of machine learning. All the data that we will consider will be in what we call a data matrix. It can be seen as describing our problem in a 2D table. The different rows of this table are different observations. For instance, different irises. We call these samples. The columns of this table give the different measures or descriptors that we have for these different samples. We call these features. In supervised machine learning, the data that we have are annotated. In other words, they are associated with a label or a target class. For irises, each of the point is associated with a type of iris or target class. The purpose of supervised learning is to predict this target, here the type of iris, on new data without annotation, entering only the petal and sepal dimensions. In mathematical terms, for supervised machine learning, we are given a data matrix that we shall denote x with n observation, and a target y, which gives a characteristic for each observation. The goal of supervised machine learning is to predict y from x. In unsupervised learning, we are given the data matrix X, but we have no available target. The goal is then to extract some form of structure from X that generalizes to new data. If we take the example of irises, in unsupervised learning, the input data would not include the type of virus because the data is not annotated. The goal could therefore be to find similarities and structures within the data or to group together observations that share common characteristics. Unsupervised learning covers a wide variety of different problems. We will not cover it there for now. Going back to supervised learning, we have to predict the target Y. This target is a property of our data. It may be discrete, describing different classes of the data, for instance, with irises, 
we're trying to predict the type of virus. In such a situation, we say that it is a classification task. It may be continuous, describing a numerical property of our observation. For instance, when trying to predict from the census who is rich, it would be interesting to predict the income in dollars. In such a situation, we say that it is a regression task. To summarize, machine learning is about extracting from data rules that generalize to new observations. In practice, we will work with a data matrix that we will call X with in samples rows, time, and features columns. For supervised learning, we have a target vector Y of length in samples, which is made of numbers characterizing each observation for regression problems and of discrete classes for classification problems.